We have a new person that is going to be a co-host alongside of Brett. Brett's not going to be here today. He's uh, very busy today selling real estate, so he's not going to be here. But I want to bring in my new co-host, and she's going to be a part of our Saturday show. And uh, I want to say, Larissa, how are you today? Hi, good morning. How are you? Good, good. So what's going on, Larissa? So um, I want to say, uh, really, I appreciate the opportunity to work with you. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, and you you seem like you have a lot of knowledge in Las Vegas. I feel like you have <laughs> a lot of background. You were born and raised in Las Vegas, yes, right? Yes, born and raised. So let's talk a little bit about what you do. We had you come on the show on a previous Tuesday. And when I started to analyze some of the, the commentary and some of the information, it made me feel like I really want you a part of these these shows because I think you bring a different dynamic. Uh, you have a different perspective from a lawyer's perspective. And then also you look at different things that we talk about and you can also give your advice or your opinion. Uh, and that's really what this show is about. You know, it's, it's understanding there's things out there that you may not agree with us. You may not understand why we're talking about this, but it does affect Las Vegas. And then you ultimately give your opinion on it. So let's get the audience to understand who you are and uh, talk a little bit more in depth on you as a person and your, you know, what your goals are, what you're trying to be. How long you been a lawyer? Let's just kind of recap here for a second. 11 years, 11 years, 11 years practicing law. Okay. So why do you feel that being a lawyer in this city, which is very competitive, you have a lot of people putting out a lot of different, um, I would say just marketing, you have billboards. This is a town for people out there that want to, you know, get into being a lawyer, any type of lawyer, a lot of accident lawyers. Right. Um, so what do you, what do you think? I mean, why did you get into being a lawyer? Um, so originally I got into law, um, just as really not knowing what I wanted to do, but I knew that the law degree would like help me excel. So originally when I went to law school, I thought I was going to do real estate law. And then by the time I got out, the market had tanked. So that wasn't an opportunity. So I started doing things that I kind of just had to do instead of I wanted to do. Right. So that's kind of, it just fell into one thing into another. So now I do what I do. I'm a lawyer. So you got into being a lawyer. What let's talk about, about before you became a lawyer. Right? Uh-huh. So you grew up in, in Las Vegas and what changes have you really seen in Las Vegas? I mean, you, you've been down, you've been here all your life. What are some of the biggest changes? Go ahead. Okay. So I feel like Vegas is a big city for growth opportunities. I've noticed that it's attracted a lot of kind of regular folks now. So it's more like a starting to turn into like LA sometimes with the traffic. Yeah. But we also, okay, so I've noticed like parts of town that were just desert, obviously now, like the development is crazy. So I still say in my little vicinity kind of that I grew up in just because of where I live and where my parents live, but driving out to Aliante, uh, what what are all the new communities? They're like building into the mountains, right? I mean, you got Sky Canyon, you got Providence, all of of North. Yeah, that to me is blows my mind. So I know when you kind of fly in too from the airport, right? If you're flying in, you come down. We used to go to California, all different places. When you come in from California, you come over the the mountains, right? Uh Uh-huh. And when you look down, I remember seeing it was just like you had the Las Vegas Strip and then it was a little bit where properties were being built out. And now you look at it and it's completely outside. Like, I mean, you're running out. It, we're not running out of room yet, but I mean, we're pushing out to Pahrump. We're pushing out yeah. to Bullet City, North. Uh, so I feel like it's a lot of growth, especially in the last 20 years. And I, and I would say this, um, at one point, the talk of the... The, of the country really of moving somewhere was like Florida and here in Arizona. We were always that top three. Do you feel that we're still that destination spot for people to Absolutely. maybe retire? You do. Yeah. And the reason is, um, number one, we don't have a state income tax. You think that's, that's going to attractive. It, that is attractive to is a it? lot of people. Yeah. yeah. What other, I mean, there's other benefits, but I think because it's new and it was affordable. Now there was an article that came out, I would say, I don't know, maybe a year ago or maybe right when COVID hit uh, or a little bit after. And they said, you know, is Nevada affordable anymore? Right. Is Well, it- that's 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 arguable now. I don't think it is for for. Yeah. Not like it used to be. Right. No. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the biggest changes, too. I've seen. Like, yeah. Things are I- super expensive now. Like even like, how about this? You got to pay to park at all the hotels now. Pretty much. Yeah, I, they used yeah, to valet 100%. your car for free at every single hotel. 
So talk, talk all you to, had to do was tip. Remember, talk to me about how that process would work. If you were going to go to a hotel and let's say you were going to park your car, what would be, you would just show up and say, okay, go park my car and I'll give you a tip. There was never like 20, $25, $30. What happens now when you go there? Is it, you get like a ticket, right? Yeah. So yeah, you have to get, you, you pay. So even if you do valet now, valet is 35 at the win. At wow. Valet. So they tell you a flat fee now that you have to pay 35 at the win. And yeah. then I've, I kind of valet everywhere when Do you? I go. Yeah, I'm a little bougie. Yeah, that's that's well, smart, I, not bad. I mean, because well, you think about it, it's smart because... I don't want to fool around with having to walk and find a parking spot. So to me, i rather just pay and pull up and then get my car and leave. Because some places, like yeah. for example, where I pa valet a lot is at uh, a shopping center that I go to. And if I have to park my car, I'm walking really far and I may have my kids. So. Yeah. Two kids? Two children, yes. Okay. And um, obviously they're your pride. So you fast forward to where you're at today. You're you're doing lawyer business. Talk a little bit about your day uh, in one day of work. Like what is the process for you when you go oh, through a day of work? that's such a good question because a lot of people don't know what lawyers yeah. do. So like when you start in the morning and then kind of take us through a daily routine of what you do. Okay. <laughs> so I wake up um, with my children. My day starts later than most people's because I've never been a morning person. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm embarrassed to say the time that I go into my office. But um, anyways, Are I you, wake up. You're self-employed though, right? Yes, I'm self-employed, but I still feel like there's a stigma. Like to get everything done, you got to wake up early. And I know I'd get more done if I woke up earlier, but I still get enough done in my short window of time because as a mom... I've already told myself, I'm not going to place my career above my children. So balance is important to me. So you would say if push comes to shove, you're going to always, and I think everybody does this, but there's a lot of people out there that are driven, right? Oh, they, I'm very they're, driven, yeah. They're focused. <laughs> so it's probably hard in some place, sometimes in your position, especially work where there's that cutoff time, right? It's like you, something just clicks and it's like, hey, my kids need me yeah. or it's mommy time or right? So does that happen a lot with you? So I've been working on that. So for me, um, I kind of have a rule like when I'm with my kids, I want to be totally present. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when they're watching things, I'll like attend to work. But then like I know sometimes when they're, you know, kids get really clingy, sure. they need attention. Yeah. So I put my phone down and everything at home because if I get home, I already know I'm not working. Gotcha. I'm not like on my phone. I can't do that. I'm like, my day has to end when I leave my office or it can go forever. Like literally I could work all night and still have more things right. to do. So do